Hey everyone and welcome. In this lesson, we are going to begin by looking at arrays inside of Roblox and how it can improve uh, our programming abilities. So I've gone ahead and created a brand new Roblox project right here using the base plate template, which just includes a base plate right here and a spawn location for us. All right, so if we press F5, we'll spawn in on the spawn location and we can pretty much play the game from here, okay? So let's get started with creating some arrays. Now, first of all, what is an array? Well, unlike a normal variable, which can hold a specific value, for example, um, we have variables that can hold numbers, that can hold strings, that can hold true or false values, variables that can reference parts. Uh, arrays are variables that act sort of like containers, okay? Or think of like a filing cabinet. It's an array that can contain multiple variables within it that we can choose to access. All right, so I think a good example would be to actually create a script and have a look at how it works. So I'm gonna go over to our server script service right here, and I'm gonna create a brand new script. And let's just call this one array tester. Okay, so here inside of our script, what I'm gonna do is show you how we can create some arrays and modify them. Now, first of all, the way we create a variable inside of uh, Lua here, inside of Roblox Studio, is we type local to define the scope. Um, in our case, local means that this variable is only accessible by this script, and we then specify a name for the variable. Now, let's just say we want to call this variable uh, num, okay, for number. And then we can put an equal sign and give it a default value of, let's just say, 5. Now, that is how we create a normal variable, okay? We give it a local, we give it a name, and then we give it a default value. Um, so how do we do this with arrays? Since I said arrays contain multiple different variables, uh, how do we do that? Well, what we're going to do down here is go local, but this time we're going to go numbers, okay? Let's actually rename this one to number, actually, to make it a bit easier. So we've got number, which is five, and numbers, which is going to be an array of various different numbers, okay? And this is going to equal, and what we need to do is put in two squiggly brackets like so, and then we can just enter our numbers. So we can go five, comma, 10, comma, 15, comma, 20, and all the other numbers that you want, okay? You can put really whatever sort of values you want in here. Uh, just make sure that all the values are of the same data type, okay? So if, the, if you're working with whole numbers, make sure there are all whole numbers and no decimals. So we can't, for example, have 15.2. Uh, that's not really gonna work. So they all have to be the same type. And that is how we create an array. Now, what are arrays useful for, okay? Why do we need this? Why can't we just create various different uh, variables, for example, num1, num2, num3, so on and so forth? Well, the benefit of having arrays is that they are very flexible and especially when tied into software like Roblox, for example, um, we can get an array of players, okay? So we can get a list of all of the players in game and then enact some commands or actions upon them by just going, okay, for all of these players, do this. Uh, or we could be looping through a number of different objects, you know, for example, if we have a bunch of lights in our scene and it turns nighttime and we want these lights to turn on, we could have an array that contains all of the lights inside of our game and just have a function that loops through all of those uh, array elements and turns them on. Now, let's go over a bit of terminology, okay? Um, with arrays here, we have two things. We have an element and we have an index, okay? So first of all, an element is basically um, a value inside of an array. So this numbers array right here has five, or it has four elements, okay? Five, 10, 15, and 20. Each of these is known as an element, okay? An element of an array. And an array is made up of a number of different elements. Now, what is an index? Well, an index is basically the number used to identify a specific element within an array. So let's just say what we want to do is when we play the game, we want to print, for example, the third element of the array to the console, okay? So we can see 15 pop up in chat. Well, what we can do then is go down here, go print, and we enter in what we want to print. So how do we print the third element of this numbers array, right? We can't go numbers like so, that'll print everything. So what we need to do is after we write down the array, 
we need to put down two square brackets like so and specify the index. And we are going to go three, okay? Because in Lua, um, the first element of the array has an index of one, then two, then three, then four. So if we want to get the third element of the numbers array, we need to give it the index of three. So hopefully what this line of code here should do is print out the number 15. So let's press play and see if that happens. Uh, if you don't have the output window here, you can go over to the view tab and just click on output right here to enable that. So let's press F5 and see if it works. All right, and as you can see, over here in the console, it says 15. So it's printing out the correct number. Let's go Shift F5 to stop playing. Um, and for example, if you want to print the first element of the array, you'd go numbers one. If you want to print the uh, fourth element, you'd go numbers square brackets four and so on and so forth. Now, as well as being able to read the values like we are doing here and printing them out to the console, we can also change the values, okay? So for example, let's just say we want to change the first value of this array and we want to change it to, let's just say, a thousand. So we can go print out the first element of the array here. And then what we can do is just go numbers, square brackets, one. And what we can then do is just like with a normal variable, we can go equals 1000 like so. Okay, so what we're doing is we are defining the array here. We are changing the first element of the array to be 1000. And then we are printing that out to the console. So when we press play, we shouldn't see five pop in the console, but we should see 1000. So let's press F5 and see if that works. And as you can see right here, it says 1000. So that's working just fine. And yep, you can go along, you can change the various different elements of your array, but what happens if you want to, for example, add more, okay? Let's just say you've defined your numbers, but down the track you're like, okay, I wanna add more numbers to this array. How do I do that? Well, it's actually quite simple. What you need to do is, first of all, let's go ahead and not change one to 1000. Instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go square bracket, and right now the max index we can choose is four because there's one, two, three, four elements in our array. But what if we entered in five instead, okay? We don't have an element uh, with the index of five. So what that means is we can define a new one. So numbers five equals 25. And then let's log that to the console so we can print that out in the output down here. And let's see how that goes. F5, and there we go. 25. So creating new elements inside of our array is pretty easy. We just define a new index for that number and have it equal to a value. So uh, we've got all this here. Now, how about different data types? Okay. So for example, if we were to go down here and create a brand new local um, array, and let's just call this one strings. Okay. This is going to be equal to a new array here. And we can have words, okay? For example, we can have row blocks and make sure to separate these uh, in, or have these inside of quotation marks. We can have row blocks, we can have studio, whoops. We can have studio, we can have tutorial, for example, and it's gonna act in the exact same way. So let's go print and let's go strings and we wanna print out, let's just say we wanna print out studio, okay? So we'd give it the index of two. Press F5 to play. And we should see, there we go. It says studio here in the output. So yeah, uh, it works with strings. It also works with booleans as well. So true and false values. Um, pretty much any type of variable that you can create normally uh, can also be inside of an array. Okay, that includes parts, that includes players, that includes even scripts, for example. Pretty much anything in Roblox can be put inside of an array, just like it can be put inside of a variable. All right. So in the next lesson, we are going to be having a look at how we can actually start putting some of our Roblox related objects inside of arrays and what we can do with that information, okay? We'll be looking at putting plays in arrays. We'll even be looking at going through our workspace and putting specific things inside of an array. So thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next lesson. Welcome back everyone. In the previous lesson, we were working on looking at arrays and how they work. Okay, to recap, pretty much arrays are variables which can contain multiple different values of the same type. 
So we created a numbers array, which contained uh, four different numbers. We then went over how we can actually then add new elements to our array here, as well as looking at string arrays. Now, how about something a bit more practical when it comes to Roblox, and that is having arrays of parts, having arrays of players. So how do we do that? Well, what we need to do is first of all, look at what we want to create as an array. So let's go over to our scene right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create some cubes. So over in our workspace, let's create a brand new cube part right here. I'm gonna go down and change the size of this part. Uh, let's just go five by five by five. So it is a five by five cube right here. Let's move it there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to rename this one. Where is it? Name, let's call this one our color cube. Okay, control D to duplicate it. We'll move it over here a bit. We'll create another one and we'll create a, another one. Okay, so we have four of these cubes called color cube. Uh, I'm also gonna go ahead and create a folder inside of our workspace. And I'm gonna call this folder our color cubes. Let's put all four of these cubes inside of that folder. And there we go. So what we're gonna do now is, as you can guess, we're gonna put all of our color cubes right here into an array. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so over in our script, what we first of all need to do is define our array or define our variable name first. So we'll go local and here we'll just go cubes. Now, what do we have this equal to? Okay, we go equal sign, then we have our square, our squiggly brackets, and then what do we enter? Do we enter in color cube, for example? No, not really. The way we can do this is actually pretty easy with just one fairly short line of code. What we need to do is we need to access this color cubes folder, okay? Now, as you can see here in the Explorer, the way it's set up is you have objects and then you have children objects. Now, these four color cubes are a child of the color cubes folder, okay? This color cubes folder is the parent of these four color cube parts, okay? So what we can do is access this folder and then have a line of code that just says, okay, get all of the children objects, so these four parts right here, and put them into an array. So we can do it like this. We've got our cubes variable, and what we need to do is, first of all, access that folder. Now to do that, we have to go game to get the overall game dot. Then we can specify the service here. We're gonna get workspace. So we need to go workspace. Now, since we're inside workspace, we can go dot and we need to go color cubes. And then we need to go colon get children. And that is the get children function. And this is gonna to return to us an array of all of its children objects. In our case, the four color cubes. So just to make sure that this is working, let's go ahead and print out the name of the first element, okay? So here I'm gonna go print, and let's go cubes, square brackets one to get the first element, dot name, okay? So let's see if this works. What we should see is color cube down here in the output. Press play, and there we go. As you can see right here, it says color cube. So we now have all of these four objects added to our array. Now, how do we make sure we've got all of them? Okay, pretty much this function here will get all of them, but how do we make sure of that? Well, what we can do is print out the length of the array. And the length of the array is, as it sounds, it prints out the number of elements inside the array. So to do that, what we need to do is go hashtag cubes. Okay, this hashtag or pound symbol basically is gonna return the length of this array. So we can play the game and what we should see is four. Okay, so it printed out four, which means there are four elements in the array, four color cubes. So we've got that all set up, that's all great. Now this sort of thing right here where we go game.workspace.colorcubes colon get children, this can work for pretty much anything else in Roblox. Okay, let's just say you wanna get a list of all the players in the game, uh, you can do this. So we'll create a local players variable equals game.players colon get children. Okay, because this players uh, object right here basically gets populated by different, um, all the different players that join your game. Okay, so when a new player joins your game, this player service will get a brand new child object that will basically contain data for a specific player. 
All right, so that's all great. We now have a way of getting a basic, basically getting the children of all these objects. Now, as a bit of a challenge, what I want you to do is go ahead and create a new array which contains everything inside of the workspace, okay? Uh, for example, cubes here, it's only containing all the objects inside of the color cubes folder and players is only containing all of the objects inside of players. But I want you to create an array that contains everything inside of our workspace right here, okay? Including all these color cubes uh, folders. And then what I want you to do is I want you to print out the length of that array so we can see how many things we have in our workspace. So go ahead, do that, and I'll be right back to see how you're done. All right, I hope you had a go at doing that. So let's have a look at how we can do this. Now it's gonna work in pretty much the same way as we've done before. So let's go local uh, workspace. Oh, we can't do workspace, that's already taken. So we're just gonna go uh, work, we'll just go work, okay? And it's gonna be equal to game.workspace colon get children, okay? Just like that. And to print off the length, we can just go print hashtag work. So save that, press play, and over here in the output, as you can see, it printed out five. Now, you may be wondering, mm, is that real? We have more than five objects here in our workspace. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, eight, nine, and then even some more in here. Well, it's only counting the children objects that are directly visible to it, okay? So if we close up all these things right here, Workspace only has one, two, three, four, five uh, children object children objects directly attached to it, okay? For example, if we want to go deeper, we could then go, okay, for all of these objects, we then want to get their children. And then for all of those objects, we want to get their children, just to make sure that we find everything. But that would require the use of for loops. Now, in the next lesson, we are going to be having a look at for loops, while loops, all these different types of loops. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next lesson.